Hi, welcome to Chad Silversmithing. Uh, first off, thanks for visiting my channel and I appreciate you uh, taking the time to watch the video. If you would, before you leave, make sure to hit the like button down below. That helps me out quite a bit. And uh, watch a couple more of my videos. Maybe you'll find that this is a channel you'd want to subscribe to. I'd love to have you subscribe. So uh, today's topic is going to be uh, a cuff bracelet. I haven't done a cuff bracelet, uh, a traditional cuff bracelet so far on the channel, so I thought I'd do one today. Uh, I'm going to use um, a piece of azurite malachite in matrix that's kind of pretty as the stone and um, I'll show you how to do this one so okay so here's the stone I was talking about it's a little uh, mixture of alachite and mazurite in little veins that run through this piece of matrix rock I thought it was kind of unique and interesting and I thought it might make a nice bracelet so that's the stone we're going to use for it I hope you can get a good look at that make sure I'm in frame here okay uh, materials we'll need a uh, 3 16 inch fine silver bezel strip. Um, for the band of the bracelet, we're going to use uh, 8 gauge half round sterling silver. Bottom of the bezel, I'll be using some um, 26 gauge sterling sheet. I also use a little bit at the ends of the bracelet to reinforce the, the band, so I'll show you that too. Uh, 14 gauge uh, round uh, sterling silver wire, which will be for um, putting some decorations in the band and I usually use hard silver solder for pretty much everything so let's get started on that bezel so I'm going to set this stuff to the side so it's out of the way it's kind of snowy where I'm at today it's kind of the first wintry wintry looking day probably told this in some a few other videos but sometimes when you have a bigger bezel like this if you put a little dimple in the bottom of it when you make it into a, a more angular shape like this it makes it springier so it allows you to get these ends together more tightly and so you end up getting better solder joints <laughs> Grab a corner here on this piece of sheet, cut a piece, just leave a little bit extra on each side. <laughs> Sometimes people try to be um, frugal with the sheet when they're going to make a, a bottom for a bezel like this and cut it much closer to the size of the bezel. I like to leave a little bit extra around there. Um, that way it allows you to get the heat pumped into the sheet more easily um, without uh, endangering the bezel which is kind of vulnerable on top like that. So if you're like me when I first started, uh, when you were trying to do a big stone, a bezel for a big stone I should say, uh, I, I spent some time melting bezels on top of the piece of sheet uh, before I figured out that the problem was I wasn't able to get the sheet hot enough because it was sitting against the pad. So a number of ways to deal with that. Some people use those tripod things that have a screen and they can uh, direct heat from underneath them. Sometimes if I need to, uh, to protect the bezel, I'll actually tip it up once everything's in place here, heat from underneath until the solder starts flowing on top and then it sits back down there. And that protects the bezel from getting damaged. But I don't think we'll probably have to do that with this one. It's not quite big enough. We'll see. Okay. 
That problem gets worse and worse the thicker sheet you use on the bottom because the more mass there is, the longer it takes to get it up to temperature. when you're doing that you're always looking to see the shiny seam form around the outside which it did. I'm just going to trim off the excess on this one. any scampering in the background it's because we have a new kitten upstairs she's very energetic for the van I use some of this 8 gauge half round which makes for good bracelet bands and <clears throat> Usually when I'm having somebody, when I'm doing a bracelet for somebody, this is kind of the thing we need here. So it's going to have this stuff out here on either side. The bezel will go right here. Let's see that. Uh, they'll rejoin down at the back here, and then we're going to use a 14 gauge to do some decorative stuff in the middle here. I know this isn't pro proportionally, I just kind of sketched it out. But. So first we'll make the outer band here. As far as sizing goes, a lot of times what I have people uh, do when they're trying to get a particular size is a strip of paper. Cuff bracelet is going to have a little gap on the bottom here so you can slide it on sideways and then turn it this way. So you got to kind of think about big of a gap you're going to want there and how to calculate that. So what I usually suggest to people is to, um, since we're going to cut, we're going to cut uh, straight pieces of this and then bend them out like this and then back a little bit this way too, I suggest they do a little bit longer than the, the ultimate desired length of the bracelet because when you bend it out like this it's going to take a little bit shorter. It's going to make it a little bit shorter. Okay. So um, the guy who uh, taught me initially, he used to suggest you make three different sizes, uh, five and a half inches for small wrists, six inches for kind of average wrists, and six and a half for bigger wrists. But I've not found that to be 100% true, so I usually measure uh, in general. For this one, I'm just going to make it about six inches long, so just for giggles. So let's do that. So I'm going to spend a little time doing these flat and straight, and then I'm going to file the ends and make sure they're about the same length. So I'll do that first. I never realized how, how much I fling my tools around until I started filming it. And I constantly have to edit out uh, noisy sounds of tools hitting the table. Sometimes if you hold it flat on the table after you get it pretty flat, and you've got a, if you've got a curve, if you grab it with your flat nose pliers like this, just hold it with those and then you can use your fingers to kind of to straighten it. So it just gives you a little leverage. Because this, this kind of wire doesn't want to bend sideways very easily. Pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and file these down. I save myself a little time and snip off the end and then file it down. Close enough, I think. Got a little bowed again. 
Okay, so let's find the center of this guy. Pretty close. This is going to be split in the middle and then it's going to be together at the ends here. So we need to decide how much of the end we want together. And I usually just kind of estimate by eyeballing it like that. I usually about a little more than a quarter inch maybe. I flip it around and line the center up again. Just extend those. Frost. Okay, so now we got a center point and we got two end points where we can bend them at. Um, if you have something that has an edge like this, you can just take it sideways like this and push it down on there. Like you could do it on the table, which you can see this here. Like this. You get kind of a bend like that. Or, or you can just use the flat nose plane like this and hold it flat on the table and try to get the bend to happen right on the mark you made like that. Now it doesn't have to be perfect for this width here for this right now. Um, I would like to have you get them pretty similar in the bend. If you want to be precise about it, it doesn't matter that much, but if you line up where these two come together like that, that's, we're going to bend these back the opposite direction so that they're straight. And that, so that'll give you a pretty close approximation to how wide you want it to be. But we can spread it open or, or squeeze it together a little bit either way, so you got some leeway to work with. Um, but in order to get these guys in the right direction, we have to bend them back the opposite direction that we bent these. Just slightly like that. We're going to have this thing, it doesn't want to bend in that direction, so it's going to try and twist a little bit. Ideally, you want to go back and make sure that everything's sitting flat on the table still. So it's going to have a tendency to be tipped up a little bit on one of these, or both of these ends. Because it's trying to find an easier way to bend. I have a tendency to bend these too far as well. So be aware, you don't need to do it very much. A little bit. I got pretty close on that one. I might need to take this one up just a tiny bit more. That's probably good. Centers line up pretty good. I don't care too much about the ends. I can always round these off a little bit, which I'm going to anyway. So, all right. Um, you could just solder these together. I usually put some reinforcing sheet beneath the ends here to, to make it stronger and, and make sure that it lasts for a really long time. So I'm going to cut a couple of little squares off of here. If you're using a little six inch pad like me, you're going to have to probably put it a little diagonally here. The hardest part about this is lining it up. <laughs> I'm going to use quite a bit of solder on the ends here because I want to make sure we have a good, nice seam on both sides. First thing, let's flux this guy up. So something I should say about um, torches when you're doing a cuff bracelet like this, if you're using one of those little butane torches that look like a creme brulee torch, you might not have enough heat in order to do a piece this large. So um, if you're going to do cuff bracelets, it's probably best to have an acetylene torch. Um, it's pushing it with these things. Sometimes if you have a really big one and you need to get it hot enough, you can use a torch in each hand. 
but that doesn't free up a hand so you can do something with it you know if you need to um, and it's awkward so uh, one of these one of these propane ones though probably uh, will have trouble getting it up to temperature unless you have a brand new one and it's really hot, really good got a good flame on it so um, acetylene though will definitely get hot making sure I got a good seam all the way around. I'm gonna look at it, make sure we got a seam all the way around. It looks, it looks like we do. Both sides, all the way in flat. Okay, so we should be able to cut these off. The excess sheet anyway. the bottoms here so they're smooth and then I'm going to round the end here kind of like that and then I usually round it so it tapers downwards a little bit too so it kind of isn't just a flat end okay this is going to go in there you notice I just I had it pretty close and I just had to pop it in there. I like to have it tight like that. You know, make sure it's pretty much in the center where you wanted it. That looks like it popped into the right place. So for this one, probably just picks out of that here and here. And then we'll start adding decorations and then we'll be ready to pick it. on these cuff braces I like to mirror the curve of the stone if there's a if it's a curved stone like that. I don't need very long pieces here. I'm gonna cut a couple just a little bit longer than I need. sorts of different decorations you could do inside of these. Um, you certainly don't have to do what I'm doing here. There's many different things you could do that are creative. That's pretty close. A little bit more. Now. I don't want it to be like that far away. So it won't there. So I'm probably going to file these so they have a little bit of a slope on them going that way, so it'll fit in there nicely. Now i got to kind of match the curve on this one, if I can. Surprisingly hard to get two things exactly the same as far as curves and stuff like that. That's close. These need to be filed a little bit that way. Probably close enough. Okay, so let's solder those guys in. Sorry if I'm getting in front of the camera here, but kind of got to get over the top of it to see what I'm doing here and make it relatively straight. It's surprising the subtle differences that you can see with the naked eye, um, which I usually don't notice until after I've soldered things together. I'm just going to pick it here, 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 and here. Again, I'm soldering something small to something that's already accumulated quite a bit of mass, so I need to heat the other part more. Four more wires to add. So So they're all going to be about yay long, so one, two, three, four, that should be enough. Let's see, kind of, we got the, this one here and here, and now we just have to put that, and that, and that, and that there, so. So I want these to be, 
room to go from here over to there, but maybe touch in the middle so they, they're joined together. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap this around the mandrel. how not consistent my bends are so I'm gonna have to spend a little time getting those to look a little more like each other. Get the basic idea of what I'm gonna do here. Okay, so you can see on this, I'm going to round the end on these a little bit so they fit up in there tight. And then these ones I'm going to file a little bit like that. I think that'll probably work. So now I just have to put it back on the pad and solder those together and then we'll let it pickle. And then we'll uh, do a little cleanup and then we'll polish it, set stone. pickle and then uh, I'll uh, do a little cleanup with the Dremel and then I'll set the stone and polish it. <clears throat> okay, did a little bit of pre-polishing on this guy uh, and so I'm going to go ahead and set the stone and then we'll take him and polish him up and see how he looks at the end. Probably not going to need more than two or three. So, looking at this particular stone. I think I'm going to put a three in, maybe. I might try two and a half. I might peel this one in half. Let's go two and a half and see how that looks. I think that's about right. So you want it to have just a little bit of shadowy area in there so that I know that I can get a little bend down over the curve of the stone. That looks pretty good to me, so let's go ahead and set that one. Here. Ok, 
Okay, I'm going to go polish this and I'll bring you back the final result. So I polished it up on the wheel. Now we just got to kind of shape it. You can use a bracelet mandrel for this if you want. I tend to do a lot of it just with my hands. Of course, when you're going to sell this to somebody, you can kind of custom fit it to their wrist based on, say, a weird wrist or something. These parts right here are hard to curve because we've made them so thick. So put them on a curved surface like this. And also this nylon uh, pliers come in handy at this for this kind of a thing too. That's a basic idea. It's pretty much shaped. You could do a little fine tuning still, but that's how you make one of these kind of cuffs. Like I said, there's a lot of variation you could do in here. Um, one differentiation here too is a lot of cuffs, if they're big ones, will have a head mounted on top of the band itself. This one I mounted it between the wires, so I kind of distinguish those two types. Uh, uh, at another point, I'll make a video about how to do one with a head separate from this so but I'll take a nicer picture and put it at the end of the video. Okay, that was a cuff bracelet video hope you enjoyed it uh, if you did make sure to hit the like button uh, I'd love to have you subscribe and share my channel with other people who might be interested as well uh, feel free to comment in the comment section uh, I appreciate uh, ideas for videos I appreciate uh, comments about this one and constructive criticism I like to hear what needs to be better so uh, let me know about those things, and uh, thanks for visiting. Uh, take care. Happy silversmithing.